March 10, 1959, the Soviet Union set up a research station known as Lazarev on the shelf ice in the region of the Shiramakar Oasis. The station was reinstalled in 1961 into the oasis and was named Novo Lazarevskia and later the Russian Bath in 2007. The US military claimed to have found a place it called Bunger Oasis. Later, in 1956, Russia built its base in the same place. However, a strange anomaly just 35 miles from the camp has become the center of a conspiracy scandal over the years. The strange phenomenon, located on a mountainside, looks like it could be some kind of entrance. An opening that enters the underground of Antarctica, natural formations of caves and caverns, or this is an artificial creation that some researchers claim is covered with a metal dome at the very entrance. This suggests that it's artificial. There is no more information about that, but it is interesting that the Russians decide to build the first base near this anomaly. Even though the origin of the anomaly is unknown, some people think it could be linked to the nearby Russian base. Other theories suggest that it could be a secret alien base. Either way, it cannot just be a coincidence that one of the most compelling anomalies spotted on satellite images of Antarctica is only 35 miles away from the Russian base. In the meantime, no one has even confirmed or fully debunked the suspicions of conspiracy theorists on what this image even shows. During further explorations during the 1940s and 50s, Many researchers discovered new ice-free areas, so-called oases with waterfalls that flowed into freshwater lakes. In 1957, the United States military found another two oases only a few hundred miles from the South Pole, large enough to build a large base with an airport. But the U.S. military kept their locations in secret to prevent other nations from potentially establishing bases there. These oases reportedly have a radically different climate from the rest of the continent and with the places free of ice and snow where the soil can reach temperatures of 77 degrees Fahrenheit at midday. According to experts, these areas could sustain year-round human settlements. Yet these highly contrasted landscapes are often difficult to spot when browsing through satellite imagery for some reason. Why? Antarctica was a tropical paradise in the past with lush and diverse life. During the research, many geothermal springs and ice-free oases were discovered where almost any form of life could have survived and even continued up until this point, even while the rest of the continent is frozen. In 1960, Russians from the Vostok base confirmed the discovery of a huge freshwater lake at a depth of more than two miles below the frozen surface of Antarctica. The lake is named after Vostok Station. The continued research by Russian and British scientists led to the final confirmation of the existence of the lake in 1993. After many years of drilling, in 2012, Russian scientists confirmed that they reached the surface of a gigantic freshwater lake hidden under miles of ice for some 20 million years. The scientists returned 40 liters of water to the surface, water isolated from earthly life forms 
since before man existed. But even more interesting and curious was the confirmed discovery of a huge magnetic anomaly on the east coast of this underground lake and it spans a vast 65 by 47 miles. Mainstream scientists suggested a hypothesis that a thinning of the Earth's crust at that location would cause the anomaly. Other theories suggest that a meteorite hit there, while others claim that the dimensions of such a significant magnetic anomaly could signify an ancient, buried in ice, lost city on the shores of the underground lake. With so many secrets around Antarctica, do you think the public would be told if something was discovered there? This lake attracted the attention of all scientists, especially when the Russians successfully drilled ice over the lake and collected biological material, because these findings continue to fuel speculation that Antarctica is holding on to secret links to mankind's past. It's hidden or forgotten by people and possibly the remnants of ancient civilizations which could have resided there in warmer times. Despite the appearance that Antarctica is a peaceful place and solely dedicated to international cooperative scientific research, and despite the public being repeatedly told for decades that Antarctica officially holds no military value, Antarctica and its surrounding islands in the polar region are of great strategic significance. And here we come to one of the greatest secrets of Antarctica, the 1959 Antarctic Treaty signed by 12 nations and currently has 54 parties. This agreement agreed on a ban on military activity on the continent, a ban on the establishment of military bases. Under this treaty, only scientific bases and missions were allowed in Antarctica. With the treaty not taking effect until 1961 Operation Deep Freeze was a huge preemptive military mobilization effort to establish a permanent foothold on the continent. The only real question is, how far did they get? During the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union and countless other wars fought in those decades, Antarctica was a peaceful place where all these countries although officially at war, still cooperated without much drama. Why? What is so interesting about the bottom of the world that all the leading countries on the planet have to put their quarrels aside? There have been many rumors about underground bases on Antarctica, and even though they're difficult to confirm, there is still solid evidence to support the idea that a significant military industrial complex is indeed embedded underneath Antarctica's icy facade. We may think they don't exist, but we could easily be wrong as they've had 60 years to work on them. On December 17th, 1938, the new Swabia expedition left Hamburg for Antarctica. Hitler's right-hand man, Hermann Goering, personally signed off on Germany's third expedition to Antarctica, and the German freighter, the MS Schwabenland, set out on one of these top-secret missions. It was to be a secret reconnaissance expedition with only 33 members plus the ship's crew. The mission objective was clearly to establish permanent bases for Nazi raids and other naval activities. Germany issued a decree in August 1939 after the mission, establishing a German Antarctic sector officially called New Schwabenland. 
the Nazis themselves were fascinated by ancient civilizations and legends of vanquished super races. They were searching for this lost Arctic home that they thought the Aryans had come from. They were looking all over the world, and that included Antarctica. Some theorists believe that they have established an elaborate underground facility known as Base 211. Some historians admit officially that there is evidence of at least minor Nazi coastal bases in Antarctica, large enough to dock German battleships during the war, but there is no clear record of activities beyond that. Unofficially, there are many rumors about several Nazi U-boats that disappeared from the records, had carried top officials to the South Pole after the war, and that a more extensive and permanent base existed there. Mainstream scholars have tried to downplay the existence of Nazi bases, and Scott Polar Research Institute from the University of Cambridge published a study to separate fact from fancy. But the news reports of the time captured the concern, as this article highlights that quote, the capture of a secret Nazi hideout proves valuable naval bases can be built in ice fields. It also stated, quote, they're hidden away in some undisclosed quarter of the Antarctic quadrant. A British naval patrol recently found a Nazi naval base. True, it was only of small dimensions, yet was sufficiently enough equipped to have repaired even the Graf Spee, referencing the notorious Nazi commercial raider that was attacking British commerce. Clearly, Antarctica had become an important military position. In one of his interviews, Admiral Byrd stated that besides other resources, they also found uranium. It was once tropical. So uh, we think there's oil there and there's evidence, probably uranium there. Is it any secret? Is there uranium there? That would be the only thing that would be practical to uh, actually go after, I suppose. Everything else would be economically uh, unfeasible, wouldn't it? Well, as we recklessly expend our resources, the time will come when we can, we'll have to go after that stuff down there. We'll have to go after that stuff down there. We'll have to go after that stuff down there. Right after World War II ended, at the same time, newspapers were quietly announcing in tiny articles buried in their back pages that Antarctica might be hiding large stores of uranium under its ice. Were there any secret underground military facilities constructed during or after this time? Were there any banned weapons tests or military activities and installations that became fully operational before the Antarctic Treaty? To better understand the secrecy surrounding these facilities, we can make a parallel with some very interesting disclosures that were declassified about U.S. military installations in Greenland. Happened in the 1960s with the cooperation of Denmark and NATO. A highly publicized cover story about the triumphs over nature and building an underground city for research under the ice at Greenland's Camp Century has been served to European allies and the American people. Meanwhile, the Pentagon kept its real activities a secret. Only later did the truth come out. Project Iceworm was a top secret United States Army program of the Cold War, which aimed to build a network of mobile nuclear missile launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet. All without Denmark's knowledge or consent. Considering what happened in Greenland, or similar installations attempted in Antarctica, 
Well, having in mind Antarctica's McMurdo and Bird research stations also featured a nuclear reactor as well as under ice tunnels and the fact that the US lied to its international allies about nuclear weapons sites in Greenland, it's more than fair enough to question whether they did the same in Antarctica. Between the 1950s and 60s, numerous press reports were comparing Antarctica's harsh conditions to the environments of the moon and Mars, cold, unforgiving, and remote. What was the role of NASA in Antarctica? Some high-ranking officials, including Werner von Braun, conducted special training missions in Antarctica. The reason for some of these training missions there was to prepare for building tunneled underground bases on the moon, like the ones in Antarctica. The question is, did they use these training missions for space travel as an opportunity to upgrade and expand military bases under peaceful pretexts in the region? Did NASA take advantage of the remote isolated area to create a secret launching base? Have they performed any rocket testing there? And what was the real purpose of those testings? So far, there is no answer to these questions. Don't miss the next episode and find out more about Antarctica's mysteries, secrets, and legends. Thank you for watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. We really hope you subscribe and if you'd like to be notified of future releases, just hit the bell button. Leave a comment. Let us know what your thoughts are on all of this and what topics you'd like to explore in our future videos.